Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol, the Thrifty Chic Housewife. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you enjoy the content that you find here, please consider subscribing, like and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below for you. So today, um, for those of you who follow me on social media, you know that my husband and I went strawberry picking um, just this past weekend in Amish country here in central Ohio and it was just wonderful it was a very hot day but it was so much fun to go and pick our own strawberries and the Amish are just lovely people we went to Moreland Farms and um, they have all kinds of things that they harvest throughout the year and you can go there and enjoy their produce and the fruits of their labor so if you live fairly close by or don't mind the drive check them out I will leave a link to their uh, information in the description box for you but they're lovely people and they grow delicious food anyway we had a wonderful time picking strawberries and so I have been busy uh, trying to process those delicious berries we brought home so today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make low sugar strawberry jam now I know strawberry jam is very common there are probably a million videos on here on YouTube on how to do it and a million more you can find on social media or on the internet on how to do it but I did put a poll out and you guys said you that you would appreciate a video on strawberry jam so I am going to be making a low sugar version anytime that I can make low sugar jam or jelly I do I like the flavor of the fruit more than all of the sugar so um, we are going to be using uh, balls um, real fruit pectin low or no sugar needed so this is fantastic you guys and uh, for those of you who do not want all that sugar this is great to use and we're going to be using that today but before we get started on our jam there are a couple things that I wanted to talk about um, first of all, one of the other things that I made with our delicious berries, and I didn't do a video on this, but I am going to share with you what I made because it turned out so good. And the reason I didn't do a video is because I'd never made it before and I wasn't sure if we were going to like it or how it was going to turn out. So I just didn't do a video. Um, but I'll probably do one next year. I'm out of, well, I will be out of berries pretty much by the time that we're done making our jam here. So I can't do another batch for you. But I made strawberry sundae syrup and it was just delicious. It is from this book. Now I've never canned anything out of this book for you guys before. I have talked about this book. I do like this canning book very much. Now I don't think that these are quote unquote tested recipes, but every recipe in here has been thoroughly researched and I trust the information that is in here. She does a beautiful job. She sticks to all of the rules and, um, does some fun things, has some fun combinations, but it is all safe canning. So I enjoy her book very much and I'm sure that you will too. But she has on page 217, this delicious strawberry sundae sauce. I'm sorry, I called it syrup, it's not sauce. It's, or not syrup, it's sauce. Isn't that just beautiful? So as I was researching ways to use up my delicious berries, I remembered she had this in this book and I thought I just have to give that a try. I made it and it was fantastic. So I hope that you will give it, a, if you want to give it a try, I hope that you'll get this book. This book is fantastic. Um, she has a lot of great recipes in here in addition to the strawberry sundae sauce, but I wanted to show it to you so you could see that I wasn't making it up. Isn't that gorgeous? so pretty and it is just so tasty just delicious mm. right on top of your sundaes and I use my beautiful flute jars by ball the new ones you guys have heard me talk about these isn't that gorgeous so pretty so I made that it's delicious I highly recommend that you give it a try I will leave a link to this book in the, de the description box for you so that you can get your own copy of this and again, she has a lot of delicious recipes in here for you to try. So the other order of business that I just wanted to talk about briefly, many of you have contacted me regarding Facebook groups on canning. I know there's a lot of frustration out there uh, from many of you, um, from the groups that you're in, they 
do unsafe practices or there are issues with the groups. So I have come across one that I really enjoy. To be honest with you, I'm not a part of a lot of groups on Facebook for the very reasons that you all have shared with me, um, the things that frustrate you about being a part of a group. So for the, those very reasons, I'm not a part of a lot of groups. However, a sweet lady from this group, she's an admin from this group, she contacted me and said, we have this group on Facebook and I would love it if you would join us. I've watched your videos and you go on and on about safe canning practices. We appreciate that and I would love for you to join our group. So that's been a little over a month now that she asked me to do that. So. Honestly, I was a little reluctant because of the very issues that we've all had being a part of Facebook groups, but I thought since she reached out to me, I would give them a try. So I did join and they are fantastic. I can say so far, I, they are very, um, they're sticklers about safety, just like I am. The admins that run the group um, are all certified master food preservers and they're just really sweet people from what i've seen they do what i do whenever they answer one of your questions they always leave a link to the um, source where they got the information that shows that they're not just making things up and um, they always show um, safe practices and i love that the lady's name is shelly well, the lady the admin who reached out to me is shelly walker bloomkey and uh, like i said she's fantastic she's just a sweet person and i know there are several other admins but she's one who i've seen most um, make comments but anyway the name of the group is home food preservers of clark county and they're fantastic so i'm going to leave their link and if you're looking for a good facebook canning group to be a part of i hope that you will give them a try and tell them that i sent you okay so back to our jam like i said we're going to be using the ball low or no sugar needed pectin and on the inside of the label it gives you all the information that you need for making your jam the other thing that i like about this is i can make as much or as little jam as i want because it's not a set packet um, you can make as few as two half pint jars or as many as 10 jars per batch so i love that um, you can also get the classic pectin in the same container and it's the same deal you can do as many as few as two or as many as ten so it's really nice and it's more economical to buy it this way in my opinion so for our jam today we are going to be using obviously strawberries i've already gone ahead and crushed them um, you want to crush them a layer at a time and then measure out how measure out the correct amount that you need for however many jars you're making. We're going to be making eight jars today. Then the other thing we need is unsweetened fruit juice, thawed fruit juice concentrate, or water. Now, oftentimes when I have made jam, I have used unsweetened fruit juice. However, since we're doing strawberry, I really want that nice strawberry flavor. I don't want anything else, any other flavor in the background really. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using water and then to my water just to bump up the flavor a little bit, I'm going to be using strawberry extract by McCormick. Um, that'll just flavor the water a little bit, give it a little extra flavor boost instead of watering down um, the flavor of the strawberries. But for other berries, it's really great to use a fruit juice. You can use you can use just about any kind of fruit juice. Apple works really well for just about any type of jam. Uh, it doesn't add too much flavor in the background, so it's a good one to use. Um, and one of the recipes on Ball's website, they used um, cranberry raspberry juice um, for their strawberry jam. So you could use that, but like I said, I really want that nice strawberry flavor. So I'm just going to use water and bump up my flavor with my extract and then um, bottled lemon juice you need for some recipes but not for this one their instructions are to use bottled lemon lemon juice only with blueberries peaches and sweet cherries so we do not need it 
And then we need our pectin, of course, and then we're gonna need sugar, sugar substitute, or honey. So you can use a sugar substitute if you prefer, or you can use honey. I'm just gonna use regular granulated sugar, and you can pick however much sugar you wanna use up to a half a cup per, um, the amounts they list are for two half pint or eight ounce, or two half pint or four ounce jars, the jelly jars. So since we're going to be making eight, I'm going to use a half a cup of sugar. My strawberries weren't super sweet. So taste, just taste your berries, see how sweet they are, and then decide from there where you want to go with your sugar. I'm going to use the half a cup for, um, every two half pint jars I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna be using two total cups of granulated sugar. So the only other thing I wanna mention is for making jams and jellies, this is just something that I learned the hard way. When you're bringing it up to a boil, you want it on high, super high heat, the highest heat that you, you can get on your stove. The longer you it takes to cook and come up to that boil, you can end up overcooking your jam and then it's bad jam. I've done that, had it, I had it on a medium high heat instead of on high heat and it just took forever to get up to a boil and it just was not very good so there's definitely a difference so when you're making jam high heat is uh, the key to getting it to come up to a boil so I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started okay guys here we go we are going to I have my heat on high we're gonna start with five and a third cups of crushed strawberries and to that, we're going to go ahead and add one and a third cups of water. And then I'm going to add about two teaspoons or so of my extract. And then we're also going to add six tablespoons of pectin. And we're going to stir all that together. And we wanna bring this up to a boil that cannot be stirred down. So we want it boiling vigorously. At that point, we're going to add two cups of sugar and we're going to boil it hard for one minute and then we are ready for canning. I'm also going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of butter. This helps with the foaming. Um, some of you have contacted me and asked me about the foaming during um, when you're making jams or jellies. If you use a tiny bit of butter, that helps with that. I'm gonna go ahead and keep going on high heat till we get up to our full boil that cannot be stirred down. Okay, while my jam is coming up to a full boil, I got my canner started. I'm got water in my canner and um, I'm gonna bring it up to simmer. My jars and my lids have been washed and my jars are sitting in hot water ready for the canning process. So if you haven't done that yet while your fruit is coming up to a boil, you can go ahead and get that done. Um, but here we go, it's starting to boil here and you wanna stir almost constantly. We don't want anything to stick or burn. Hey guys, we are up to a full boil that cannot be stirred down. It's still boiling while we're stirring. So we're gonna go ahead and add two cups of sugar and stir that in. So once you get, add your sugar, it has to come back up to a full boil like this. And then we wanna boil it hard for one minute. Okay guys, our minute is up, so we are ready for canning. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. I'm gonna be doing steam canning, but you can also do water bath canning. The principles, the times, all that are the same. So you wanna make sure your jars are clean and nice and hot. My lids I've washed and set aside. There's no need to pre-sterilize jars or lids if you are canning for 10 minutes or longer and we're gonna be canning for 10 minutes. So we don't need to pre-sterilize anything and we are ready to start filling our jars. We're looking for a quarter of an inch headspace. Okay, here we go. Let's get a couple of jars going here. I'm trying to bring you in a little bit closer um, so maybe you can see a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and ladle our jam into our jars to a quarter of an inch head space. So 
So once you get to a quarter of an inch headspace, you're going to use your debubbling tool and remove any air bubbles. Your headspace may change slightly. If it does, you can always add a little bit more. Then I take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean the rims of my jars. We don't want anything interfering with a seal. And then we're going to center our lids and add our rings fingertip tight. And then we're going to lift them into our canner with uh, simmering water. I didn't get quite eight. I got seven and some change, which is totally fine. Um, but we're going to go ahead and crank our heat up to high and put on our lid. I'm using the Victorio steam canner and it has a gauge on my lid that tells me when I'm ready to start timing. So I'm going to bring it up to temperature. If you are water bath canning, you need to make sure you have enough water in your canner to cover your jars by at least an inch and you want to bring it up to a full boil. Okay guys, we are up to temperature so it's time to set our timer. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and then what you need to do is you want to um, slowly reduce your heat just so that you either maintain a full boil if you're water bath canning or if you're steam canning make sure you're maintaining your steam if you have a gauge you just want to stay in your green zone so I'm looking to stay in my green zone I'm just going to slowly reduce my heat so that, so that it stays enough just to stay in the zone and then we'll time 10 minutes and when our 10 minutes are up we will be done Okay guys, our time is up. I went ahead and turned my timer off and we're going to turn our heat off. We're going to remove the lid. Make sure you remove it away from you so you don't give yourself a steam facial. If you are water bath canning, you're gonna want to let your jars sit in your canner for five minutes to start to cool a little bit. If you are steam canning, according to um, the instructions from the lady who did the steam canning research, you do not have to let your jars sit for five minutes in the canner. So we can go ahead and remove them. They're starting to seal. Love that. Give you a close up. Doesn't that look delicious? Still has a beautiful red color to it so pretty and so tasty. Okay, so now you're gonna let your jar sit for 12 to 24 hours undisturbed, and then you can remove your bands, check your seals, and wash your jars and label them and store them in a cool, dark, dry place. Um, so that's it for our low sugar strawberry jam. This is what I had left over, so I thought I would just show it to you. See, it's starting to set up beautifully. So good just so pretty love that so i hope you'll give this low sugar version a try better for you than all that sugar and you get the taste of the fruit more than just something that's super sweet so give it a try if you have any questions or comments for me please feel free to leave them in the comment section like subscribe and share and i will see you next time have a great day guys